everyone, I'm Kelly Maddow from Nanlite USA, and today we're gonna take you through a super simple, yet beautiful, way to do a table scene. How simple, you ask? Well, the way we lit this scene was only with one light. So let's jump right in. So let's talk a little bit about the gear we chose to use. So we had three actors at the table so that we could have a nice little simple setup of them just eating a cheese plate, having some tea with each other. And again, we only wanted to use that one light. So the light that Mark Raker, the cinematographer, and I decided to use was the Forza 300B. We chose the Forza 300B because it's a bicolor version of the Forza 300, which is mainly daylight. And we wanted to have the opportunity on set to basically choose what kind of Kelvin and what kind of mood and tone we wanted through the actual color of the light. So we went with the Forza 300B and we knew immediately that if we wanted to do a nice flattering top light on the actors that we wanted to use a lantern. So Nanlite makes three different lanterns, but we decided to go with the medium lantern, which is a 31 inch lantern. That's the Nanlite Lantern 80. And this lantern, like all the other lanterns, comes with a skirt. And what's nice about that is this beautiful diffused top light. You can really control and narrow down that beam when you put the skirt on top of the lantern. So in terms of Mark's camera bag, he used his Sony a7S Mark II for this, but he also like mixed and matched the lenses that he chose to use, depending on the kind of coverage that we needed to get. We did wide shots, medium shots, close-ups, and so in order to get that range, he used his Canon 35mm, his Voltlander 50, and my absolute favorite was his Leica 90. It really made some beautiful close-ups on the actors. So in terms of mounting the light over the actors and having enough headroom and making sure that the lantern didn't end up in the shot, we were super lucky. We actually were in a space that not only had high ceilings, but it also had beams. And we were able to use these beams to actually mount the light over the table right where we wanted it to be. We were even able to mount the ballast to the beam with a ratchet strap. So we really did have just 360 degree uh, access to different shots without having to worry about light stands or anything like that. So in terms of settings when it came to the light, we actually did decide to go with 5600 Kelvin, a daylight, because we had so much daylight naturally in the space already that we decided to just match that. We could have gone a little bit warmer, but we really didn't want it to be too drastically different from what we had already. We even blocked some windows and put down some shades just to kind of make sure that we didn't have too much daylight coming in and that the light from the lantern, which was at 100% intensity, was really the light that we were focused on. Now I wanna take a second and go back to the concept of the skirt. So again, all Nanlite lanterns come with a skirt. And the reason for that is, you know, this lantern is a beautifully round soft box that gives off this beautiful soft light and can spread it everywhere if you wanted to, but the skirt allows you the ability to really narrow the beam if you need it to be a little bit more narrow, which, for table light, it really is usually a top light that's coming straight down. It's not really going everywhere. So in order to make it feel more natural, we decided to take the skirt and use it to direct the light downward. We also took a moment to take a shot, a wide shot without the skirt so that you could see the difference between what it looks like when it's spreading light mostly everywhere versus when you put the skirt on it and it narrows down that soft light. So one thing I think is really interesting to take into consideration when you're shooting scenes like this and you're getting different coverage, you're getting a close-up shot with the wide shot, you really wanna make sure all that coverage matches when you hand it to the editor and then they have to put it together so it makes sense. So something that Mark and I decided to do was when we went in for a close-up on Alex, the female actor at the very end of the table, we decided to move Pam, the actress across from her, a little down and away from her, because when we did the close-up, her eye line made more sense if she was looking at Pam farther away. 
when we actually cut the scene together. So that's a little movie magic for you, but we really did want to make sure that when you cut it together, it all makes sense. Another thing we decided to do was because Christian, the male actor, had all this gear behind him, instead of taking an hour and moving all that gear, we actually just moved Christian to the other side of the table and flipped everything around and then had Pam and Alex switch their positions as well to make sure that the scene still cut properly together. But this saved us like an hour of hustling and bustling and moving gear. Another thing I really like about Christian's close-up is you can tell the light on him is actually a little more dramatic. It's a little moodier um, when you compare them to the close-ups of the ladies. And the reason for that was because Mark and I decided to kind of position him in a different place where the light was. So again, it's still the same light setup. It's still the Forza 300B with a lantern overhead with a skirt. But where you place your actor will influence what, how the light falls on them and the mood that you're going to communicate with the lighting. Okay, everybody, that's it. That is our super simple how to light a table scene setup. If you guys have any suggestions on how you tend to light these kinds of scenes, please let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please make sure to press that subscribe button. We have a lot more tutorials coming your way. Thank you so much for watching.